Venom number no. 8 by Al Ewing was published few days ago with this impressive cover showing Kang the Conqueror ripping the symbiote in half. Eddie Brock became the king in black, the leader of the symbiote species and the center of its hive mind. Trying to control the symbiotes from Earth, Eddie removed his consciousness from space-time and arrived at the end of existence itself. But his physical body was destroyed in the process, leaving his consciousness imprisoned in the distant future, and his son Dylan alone with the Venom symbiote in the present time. Mediating while floating above the pool of the living abyss, Eddie noted that the other kings in black avoided him, and that he hasn't seen Bidlam, the giant red symbiote, since their last tussle, and that this place, known as the Garden, is no more than a prison. Eddie hasn't felt this alone since the symbiote found him for the first time when he was thinking about committing suicide and saved his life and soul. He then had a vision about Dylan being attacked by Bidlam and maybe dying. Eddie then had a panic attack and wished Meridius was there to help him, but then realized that Meridius was also a prisoner in the garden, like the others. As his panic intensified, Eddie sent his consciousness back in time. He found himself remote piloting a heavily armored symbiote, which introduced itself as a war symbiote in service of the Conqueror. The panic attack did what his concentration could not, as it dislodged him back into the time stream. Noticing a space battle taking place beyond the force field, Eddie did not know where he was, and was informed that he was on the flagship Nathaniel, in service of the Conqueror in the far future, but Eddie felt that the streamline was pulling him back to the garden. He realized that he needed a distraction to keep him grounded, but was suddenly interrupted by an army of alien soldiers, the commander of which ordered him to surrender the symbiote or face immediate discorporation. Transforming his arms into plasma cannons, Eddie opened fire on the soldiers despite the symbiote's warning that it was against protocol. Eddie asked if it had a problem with that, and after a moment of calculating its odds of victory against three battalions of guards, the symbiote replied that it did not. Eddie called the symbiote Buddy Boy, but the symbiote inquired as to why, and Eddie said that he had to call it something. Rejecting the nickname, the symbiote selected the code name War Star, being a War Star Class Type 2 battle symbiote. Defeating the last of the guards, the War Star informed Eddie that it sensed a Type 4 battle symbiote up ahead. Peering around the corner, Eddie saw a massive armored symbiote with spikes all over its body. He realized that he stood no chance of defeating it in combat and made a plan, making War Star firing at the force field near the red symbiote, that it deactivated it long enough to shoot the symbiote into space. Eddie noticed that the symbiote was guarding an important looking door which opened and revealed Kang the Conqueror. Eddie saw his face in the War Star mind, so he wasn't surprised, but Kang wasn't surprised either. Kang said that he was surprised the War Star symbiote broke protocol and that Eddie should not have been able to remote pilot one without authorization. Kang then told Eddie that he knew him for years across eons. Ten thousand years ago, he stood on a bridge like this one and showed Eddie a hard light hologram. Kang ran the universe through his fingers and told Eddie back then that if he played his game on his board by his rules, then he could rule the universe too. Eddie refused Kang's offer, but Kang said that he and Eddie made a good team for a while, and that this is their first meeting from Eddie's perspective, but Eddie said that he did not care about all that, as Kang was no more than an enemy to the Avengers. 
With that, Kang was left no choice but to attack Eddie with his energy sword, remarking that it was a strange first meeting. The War Star symbiote warned Eddie that attacking the Conqueror was extremely against protocol, but Eddie said that he only wanted to test his personal defenses. The symbiote accepted that and blasted Kang, who managed to freeze the bullets, and mocked Eddie for using a primitive technology. Eddie switched to flamethrowers and blasted Kang with 2000 degrees Kelvin flames, but Kang shielded himself and mocked Eddie for fighting a battle he did not understand. Kang told Eddie that he was trying to help him, and Eddie thought that he should listen, but ordered Warstar to play by Kang's rules, and to take the shape of the king in black, and to copy Kang's sword. They dueled briefly, before Kang ripped off Eddie's arm, remarking that Eddie could never hurt him, then slashed him multiple times with the energy blade, but without leaving any wounds, cause what Eddie copied from Kang wasn't a weapon. Eddie felt stronger than ever before, while Kang said that he used the time sword to pin his temporal form to this moment of now. Eddie asked how Kang knew he was having time problems, and Kang said that Eddie told him or would tell him in his future, and offered to help him learn to how time travel at will. Eddie did not trust Kang, but thought that this could be the only way available to reach Dylan. Kang then left the room and made his way to his office, where his superior was waiting. Kang told his boss that Eddie was still suspicious and violent and did not trust him. But he did not suspect that Kang was baiting someone else trap, since Eddie did not know anyone else capable of making such plan. Smirkin, Meridius complimented Kang on playing his part to perfection. Al Ewing is doing great with the plot, but I think it's little bit slow for me. Can't wait to see how Eddie's gonna turn the table on Kang and Meridius, and reach Dylan. Until then, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Thanks for watching, and have a nice one.